Among the colonial empires of the past, the Dutch one is in many ways unlike the others. The colonial race sometimes reach absolutely incredible proportions, so for some time the colonies even made up most of the territories on the planet. And this was one of the main signs of colonialism, imperial ambitions, the desire to subjugate as many lands as possible. A vivid example is the rivalry between Britain and France, who captured everything they could. And this confrontation, in turn, pushed other European countries to overseas expansion, because many felt that soon there would be nothing more to conquer. The Netherlands, on the contrary, did not seek to expand its colonies, usually sticking to coastal areas. Its main goal was to make trading profit. The development and colonization of large territories, not without reason, were considered by the Dutch as too expensive and time-consuming. But if the Dutch were aiming at some lands, they didn't recognize any authorities and were at enmity even with the colonial giants. The rise of the Netherlands began in the 16th century, when the country was under the rule of the Spanish king. Its geographical position allowed it to play a significant role in the trade of the northern Europe. An influx of the new founds to Europe began after the discovery of America and the formation of Spanish colonies there. Then Antwerp turned into one of the most important European port cities. But in the second half of the 16th century, the Netherlands began an 80 years war of independence with Spain. The northern provinces formed the Dutch Republic. Antwerp was badly damaged during this war, and thus the trade center moved to Amsterdam. In fact, the Netherlands became an independent state in 1581, although Spain didn't recognize its sovereignty for a long time. Gaining independence started a tremendous economic and cultural upsurge. The 17th century is called the Dutch Golden Age for a reason. The founding of the Republic and the successful opposition of Spain attracted many European entrepreneurs, scientists and artists to the Netherlands. And the discovery of new lands and markets pushed the Dutch to distant trading expeditions. At the beginning of the 17th century, two prominent trading corporations were founded, the Dutch East and West India companies, which controlled trade with Asia and America. They established settlements and forts on the main trade routes from Brazil to Thailand. Since the war with the Spaniards was still going on, the Dutch also encroached on their vast colonial possessions. This included the colonies of Portugal, which at that time was subject to the Spanish kings. However, when Portugal left the union with Spain, its war with the Netherlands continued anyway. Except for Brazil and some African territories, the Portuguese colonies represented a chain of strongholds and bases worldwide that the Netherlands sought to create. Individually, they were too weak to resist the mighty East India Company, which had its own armed forces and navy. Therefore, the Dutch gradually ousted the Portuguese from good places. Throughout the first half of the 17th century, there was a Dutch-Portuguese war to redistribute colonial spheres of influence. During it, the Portuguese lost many colonies on important trade routes. In particular, the Dutch conquered the island of Ceylon, the city of Malacca, the Maluku Islands and some forts on the western coast of India. This war lasted 60 years. After its end, the Dutch replaced the Portuguese as the dominant European power in Asian trade. Also, during the struggle of Japan against foreign influence, primarily the Spanish and Portuguese, the Netherlands, for more than 200 years, remained the only country that was allowed to trade with the Japanese shogunate. Of course, the Netherlands not only captured already existing colonies. In the middle of the 17th century, the Dutch founded Kapstadt, the future Cape Town. It became an important staging point for the ships of the East India Company. The Cape Colony in South Africa subsequently expanded and became an exception in the Dutch colonial system. Colonists, who became known as the Boers, moved far inland. Also, the Dutch began to explore Indonesia as a promising source of spices. A colony was founded on the island of Java. That was the base for the future Dutch East Indies, which will include almost the entire archipelago. In particular, the Dutch founded the city of Batavia, today's Jakarta. In an attempt to control Indonesia, the Netherlands faced competition from the Englishmen. Since Francis Drake circumnavigated the world, they have been eyeing these islands. But the Dutch were stronger in this fight. 
the Englishmen were forced to abandon their claims to Indonesia and turn their attention to India. England at that time was just at the beginning of its path to colonial domination. Later this confrontation will grow into a whole series of Anglo-Dutch wars. The Dutch navigators contributed considerably to geography with their research and great discoveries. William Janssen in 1606 became the first European to reach the coast of Australia. Abel Tasman discovered New Zealand, named after one of the provinces in the Netherlands. However, colonies were not founded there. These lands were considered too remote. But from a historical perspective, these achievements of the Dutch stood on par with the expeditions of Columbus, Vasco da Gama and Magellan. No less ambitious were the actions of the Dutch West India Company in the Atlantic Ocean. As part of the war with Portugal, the Dutch occupied northeastern Brazil. But in this vast colony, the Portuguese had much more troops than in their dotted Asian possessions. After 25 years, they managed to oust the Dutch. Then the Brazilian forces of the Portuguese organized an expedition to Angola, another Portuguese colony occupied by the Dutch, where they also forced them to capitulate. Of the acquisitions of the Netherlands and Africa in South America, it is worth noting several small islands in the Caribbean, in particular Curaçao and Aruba, as well as the coast of the modern Ghana. These territories became Dutch centers of the slave trade. From Ghana, slaves were sent to the Caribbean islands for sale and distribution throughout America. The North American continent was explored very little in the early 17th century. The Netherlands attempted to find a northern route across the Atlantic to Asia. Having been hired by the West India Company, the Englishman Henry Hudson went on an exploratory mission to North America. He discovered Manhattan Island and described this stretch of coast in detail. These lands were called New Netherlands. In 1624, New Amsterdam was founded there. The Dutch also annexed the Swedish colony in the modern state of Delaware. Favorably located for the trade with the native inhabitants, the New Netherlands colony soon attracted the Englishmen's attention. They captured New Amsterdam, unleashing the Second Anglo-Dutch War. The city was renamed in honor of the Duke of York. For a short time, the Dutch managed to win back the city, but as a result of a peace treaty after this war, New York was traded. It remained English, and in return, the Netherlands received a colony of Suriname in South America. The Golden Age of the Netherlands also meant the peak of its colonial expansion. The Dutch founded colonies on all the then known continents, and even discovered a new one. They also successfully confronted England. The first three Anglo-Dutch wars ended basically in a draw. After the end of the Third War, there was a break in conflicts with England for more than a hundred years. At the turn of the 17th and 18th centuries, the Netherlands was at the peak of its power. The weakening of the country in the 18th century was due to economic reasons. After the boost came a period of stagnation and decline. Having failed to defeat the Dutch on the battlefield, the British gradually overtook them economically and technically. The World Financial Center has moved from Amsterdam to London. Just an unessential of the profits that the Netherlands received from the colonies was invested in the development of industry and production so the lag behind Britain became more and more during the 18th century. The Fourth War with the British began after the Netherlands supported the American colonists who fought for independence. It ended with the complete defeat of the Dutch. The East and West India companies suffered great losses and were abolished. Their lands came under state control. During the French Revolutionary Wars, the country was occupied by France. The British immediately took advantage of this by capturing many Dutch colonies. After the defeat of Napoleon, not all of them were returned. The most significant for the Netherlands were the losses of Ceylon and the Cape Colony. In South Africa, this led to the opposition of the Dutch colonists, the foundation of independent states by them, and ultimately to the famous Boer Wars. Those, however, ended in victory for Britain. In the 19th century, the Netherlands could no longer compete for colonial supremacy, so the main efforts were to expand the existing colonies in Indonesia. Although Java has been colonized since the 17th century, many neighboring islands and regions still remained independent. During the Indonesian expansion, the Dutch faced fierce resistance from the locals. 
bloody wars were fought until the beginning of the 20th century. For example, the conquest of the Aceh Sultanate in the northern Sumatra took more than 30 years. So when Japan occupied Indonesia during World War II, the local population perceived it as a liberation from Dutch rule. After the defeat of Japan, the War of Independence immediately began. At the end of 1949, the Netherlands had to recognize the sovereignty of Indonesia. And in 1975, during the global decolonization, Suriname gained independence. Of the former colonies, only a few Caribbean islands still belong to the Netherlands. Looking at the modern map of the world, you can see many toponyms left over from the Dutch colonial past. Most of these places are in South Africa. The Dutch city names can be found throughout the country, including its largest city, Johannesburg. Also, the common language in South Africa is Afrikaans, derived from Dutch. Even in New York, some areas retain the Dutch names. For example, Harlem and Brooklyn are former Dutch settlements named after the cities of Harlem and Brooklyn in the Netherlands.